all right, Pooey, and I filmed like an additional 10 minutes on that one, and for some reason I got cut off, which I saw it kind of flicker and wondered if it did that. So today's topic, we are talking about the practice for life. I had just given you basically the housekeeping update for movement medicine and who I was. So if you're interested in all that, which I hope you are since you're here watching, um, and learning about the bigger, bigger picture of what I bring into the world and what I'm passionate about and how I would love to help you do the same thing in your life um, using what I call the mystery skills and modern day science around body language and intuition and human energetics. Um, but today's topic, we are talking about dance, conscious dance specifically, being this practice for life in that you know, other people say that yoga and meditation are definitely these type of things where you get on the mat or you get in your seat, seated meditation and you do these practices so that you can take the rewards, I guess, if you will, out into the rest of your life. Um, and I believe this is beautiful and this definitely is very applicable and I would hold to the fact that dancing is an even greater practice for life. Not only can you do it for your entire life, um, even if you can only move your fingers or your eyes, by the end of your life you can still dance because you're still in movement. Um, but it's also this amazing tool to use to help to awaken. And what do I mean by that? Awaken. Awaken your 3D physical senses of touch because we do something called contact improv with others. But we also, you know, I will spend a lot of times just waking up my skin, the biggest organ that I have on my body. Um, I will awaken my eyes by looking at the visual amazingness that is being painted in front of me, which hints to tomorrow's topic. Um, I will wake up my ears, obviously, because I'm really listening to the sound, the, the feeling senses of heat, feeling the sound move through me. And I'm also waking up those psychic abilities, which if you didn't hear me say my little spiel, please go back and watch part one of this series uh, for today about what psychic abilities really are and how I'm normalizing that word. But it's just the ability to be able to perceive energy that which is in between us, right? And my example is we all can walk into a room and say whether or not we like the energy of the room or we can tell if somebody has a negative vibe. That is your psychic ability. And so in the conscious dance space, we are waking up all of those senses, especially those subtle body, the energy body senses, um, if you bring the awareness to it, right? And as we bring awareness to that, that brings awareness to where we might be feeling or thinking or having stories or visual stories, depending on what kind of learner or speaker you are, if you're an auditorial or visual or feeling um, speaker, we all have these themes in our past, um, whether it be immediate past or way, way, way back in our past that are unintegrated. Um, unintegrated energy, and I can't remember if I said this after the time went off last time or not, um, but this is what people call trauma. Trauma is nothing more than unintegrated stories, if you will, from our past. And stories are nothing more than energy. They are energy that's not integrated, but they're still taking up space in ourselves. So what this, so to wrap this up around the practice for life, I feel like I'm getting a little esoterical on you here. Um, to bring this back down to the earthly plane, the practice for life is that we, we create this microcosm of um, exploration within the dance world, especially when you're dancing with other people, whether you're you know intending to dance with them or not, if they're in the same room with you, um, we're creating this microcosm of the rest of your world. And the dance world has this special ability to shine light, to bring consciousness or awareness to areas in your life where you might have some of that unintegrated baggage or shit that you um, probably don't want to see, but the dance floor is going to bring it up for you. And it's amazing because then you get to work through that. You get to create more spaciousness in yourself because now you've integrated and or released that energy, which creates freedom. And this goes back into yesterday's topic of the marriage of freedom and responsibility. You've taken the responsibility by shining the light, by using this practice for life on your stuff, and you integrate it. You create space, which is freedom. 
now let's have an example of what this can look like. So um, a lot of times on the dance floor, there will be opportunities to connect with other people. And they might move into your personal, which is four to eight feet, or your intimate space, which is eight, uh, four feet to 18 inches. Um, or sorry, four, uh, yeah, I'm getting my, my thing wrong. It's actually 18 inches to your face. Personal space is four to eight feet, or 18 inches to four. I can't, that's my body language side, and I'm totally messing it up, but as people come in closer, <laughs> You get a chance to slow down if you are bring, being aware and bringing your awareness in and see how your body is responding. And you might be entering that dance space, so we'll back up a little bit, with boisterous extroverted energy and you just want to connect to whoever wants to connect. But then all of a sudden this person comes in and you start to do this. Now this is your body responding to the energy that's coming towards you and your energy is creating a physical response in you. And you get to decide in that moment, uh, maybe without putting a story to it, why, how you want to respond. And then you get to explore why you responded, right? You came in with this boisterous extroverted energy but then all of a sudden this body is coming towards you. and you're, you're closing up. Um, and so this is where that practice for life comes in, is you get to practice on so many different levels. Like, how do you respond to your body doing this? How do you communicate to that other person? Do you proceed to connect with them because that's what they want to do? And if so, why? Why are you unable to give that person a no? What is in you? Is it because you want to protect them or or feed whatever they are needing from you, or is it because you've been trained to do that, or is there some unhidden subconscious trauma that's blocking you from being able to get a no out, and there's ways to get a no out non-verbally, or prayer hands, or no. Um, and, it, and can you take it um, in a way that it's not personal about them, it's just in that moment, you're not receiving, you're not resonating with their energy. You might five minutes later, you might the next dance, right? But in that moment, there's this exploration for both you and them. And your response, you are not responsible to them for their reaction to your response of how you're going to communicate what you need to them. Your work is just to like get really clear on how why your body is doing this and being honest about how you want to respond to them. And this goes into so much more work. Woo! These topics always go so much deeper than I think they're going to go. But yes, um, you know, so that's the in the moment practice for life. But then you get to like look outside and say, okay, well, where is this happening in other parts of my life off the dance floor? And how can I use what just happened on the dance floor? Because it just has this special way of the conscious dance space has a special way of creating light in us about what's happening around our relationship with ourselves and other people. And almost definitely, I can almost say this with 100% certainty, this is probably happening in other parts of your life off the dance floor. So how do you deal with it here? And how do you deal with it here? And what work do you need to do off the dance floor so that you can have strong no's, so that you can have strong boundaries and standards with people and yourself? So you can really listen to your own internal body language and know what's right for you in the moment. And that might shift moment to moment to moment. Um, it's also an amazing place, and I don't even know how long I'm at now, but um, it's also an amazing place for like when interactions between people come up, um, because you're in this microcosm that somehow shines the special light on human dynamic between people and their interactions and their connections, and um, probably because body language is such a huge part of our conversation when we don't even realize it. And, in the dance space, it's only body language. It's only the nonverbal. So you're really learning to pay attention to that. And it shines a light on an interaction. So an example for me is there's a woman in my community back in Santa Cruz who's had this really nasty, I'll be honest, energy towards me every time I see her on the dance floor for about a year and a half. And I addressed it a year and a half ago, asking if it was something I did, and if so, could I learn from that? Could we engage in a conversation? So this was off the dance floor. I asked for a conversation. Um, and 
the answer was no. The answer was it wasn't about me. This was her own thing, and she was going through it. And so I let it go. And that was a practice of, of okay, I felt this energy coming towards me. Now how can I take this out into the rest of my life? And then I looked at that, and I was like, okay, if I can do it with this woman, how can I apply that to other areas of my life and other relationships of my life? How can I reply or apply the ability to stay detached from her her response to me and, and my need to work through that energy and her inability or unwillingness to work through that with me in other deeper relationships in my life. And so that was the application of that. Um, and I got another opportunity to practice that again a year and a half later. Um, and there's so many more examples like that. But in general, anything that happens on the dance floor within yourself or between the inner actions of other people almost always can be taken and applied to other areas of your life that are happening. Um, all right, so I think that wraps it up. Please go back and watch the um, housekeeping that I was mentioning in video one in this series. Stay tuned for tomorrow where I talk about dance as my art form. And then Monday, Benjamin Noble, woohoo! He is gonna be on our first interview, so please join us for that. We talked earlier today and it's gonna be super, super juicy and yummy. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend. We'll see you tomorrow at 12. Bye-bye.